Good morning and welcome to Vlogmas Day 5. This morning I've just been working on my final portfolios. I finished my poetry portfolio so I was able to turn that one in and I've been working on editing my essay for the creative nonfiction portfolio. I also need to work on my reflection and my future plan for that portfolio as well. So those are some things I'm going to get done today. just finished going over this essay again and adding a lot more. You can see all the red is everything I've added so I probably added another page, page and a half to it this morning. Hey Sunny. I also added in all of my daily flash prompts. So these are just the prompts that we've had every day in class. Um, I compiled them into my final portfolio document. <laughs> Sunny, she is, loves messing with my papers. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I've been working on my resume and I just put it through this little AI deal that my university has for like grading resumes. It's called VMOC if anyone is familiar with it. But anyways, it um, reformatted my resume. It gave me a 63, it was my grade. So reformatted it and then I changed a bunch of stuff and now my grade is up to a 94, but it's ugly. Like the formatting is bad and kind of illegible and confusing. So I went in to try and change a couple things, like some commas to some like lines, just to separate different things like my email and my phone number. Um, and it ruined the entire formatting that this VMock app did. <clears throat> so now I feel like I have to start from the very beginning. I've been literally working on my resume for hours. I'm so frustrated because my resume is done. Like. <clears throat> education experience skills like I have it all done I'm just working on the formatting the formatting to look professional and look like I know what's going on and I'm very frustrated so yes that's just an update of where we're at now and I guess I can show y'all a little bit of my resume where it has like not the personal information let's see so you see here how it has this like nice formatting you know, the date is over there, the bullets, blah, blah, blah. Well then, I come over here where I was trying to edit it and it's completely ruined. Now the date is in there. Like, oh my gosh, it looks so ugly now and I can't edit anything. I have to keep it like this. So this is the original formatting that I had on my resume before submitting it to VMock and, oh, I don't know, dude, I'm so confused. Definitely comment down below if you have any suggestions on what I should do. <laughs> While I've been working on my resume, I'm also working on my LinkedIn profile. So just a couple of tips for y'all. Definitely add a profile picture, of course. And I also think it really helps you to stand out to add a custom background picture because otherwise everyone has the same default one. And it just looks like you really put more effort into your LinkedIn profile if you have that. Also change up here, you've got your public profile um, URL and you can change it. So it'll probably be something like your name and then... 12 numbers, which is just confusing. So I just changed mine up there. Definitely um, do that. And you, then you can just put your LinkedIn URL in your resume at the top of your resume with like your email, your phone number, all that stuff. And it makes it a lot easier for people to find you. Also, um, you can do this deal, add profile sections. So I already have the education section and I have the skills section. Um, I also have an about section that I added and um, an experience section. So I would recommend adding all of those. And then f another final thing is to definitely connect with people, whether it's like your friends, your parents, your bosses at jobs that you have now, or co future companies that you wanna work for. So like this company Endeavor, I did a career fair and I spoke with them. So I've already added them on here. And I also added the two individuals that I spoke with from this company on here. So I'm making those connections already and with the picture, 
um, they can hopefully connect that back to the meeting on Zoom. And um, also, if you do go to any of these career fairs, send a follow-up email so they can remember your name too. So I sent a follow-up email just saying, hey, my name's Emily. Um, I met with you at this career fair. Thank you so much for the time. And so now they've seen my face and my name three or four times at least before I've even applied for a job. So that is definitely very helpful. I wanted to have kind of an easy day with the decluttering. So I went through my Mercari stockpile and I just donated anything that has been up for over a month and hasn't sold. And I'm already at 22 items. And I've also filled my first trash bag. So that is super exciting. So this is only after doing this experiment for 10 days. 10 days of decluttering and I've already got one bag full. It's been a couple hours and I'm looking over the resume and the resume software, it's called VMock. And from some light Googling, I have basically decided that this VMock is, like it's basically if I put my resume through ChatGPT, that's what this is doing for me. I thought, again, my university failing me. Why am I even surprised? I thought that when my university said they would review my resume, I would email it in and a few days later, I would get an email back from a human who had reviewed it, but no. It was this internet thing and the AI bot, the feedback it gave me was so bad because <laughs> I changed it to, from like a 62 grade to like a 98 or whatever, right? The only feedback I was getting was like formatting issues and not specific enough bullet points. That's it. And it was telling me I needed to add like numerical, you know, something tangible like 20 this, 10% this. It needs to have a number in every bullet point. That doesn't make sense to me. So I'm I'm gonna go back to my original resume. Um, I'm gonna look over the VMOC resume just to make sure like n if there's any details I added to that one that I wanna transfer over to the original. But yes, I am pretty annoyed with that software and with my university for posing like I was gonna get an actual um, person to look over my resume and not just a an AI bot. But anyways, that's fine. Also on the topic of like resumes and everything, if you pull up any of your um, syllabus, any of your your old syllabi, they will all have like a learning goals or a, a section for basically like what you should get out of taking this class. And these are really good to look at for helping um, bullet points on your resume. So like explain and apply the rhetorical canons of invention. So now I can put on my resume like, oh, I know how to explain and apply. I mean, obviously I would reword it, but like I, I know um, a lot about the rhetorical canons of invention, arrangement, style, delivery. Let's see, another one. Um, cite keywords and key figures in the field of rhetorical of rhetoric and discuss how they talk to around and across each other so like just wording that into being like oh i can do this now um i can do this now that is a really easy way to get some skills onto your resume if you just really don't know where to start and you're struggling with really short skill like key phrases like um typist quick writer teamwork like those are great skills that i do have on my resume but it's better to have the longer bullets that um, convey more information and more of what you are actually able to do. And as always, definitely have like your regular resume, but tailor your resume to every job that you apply for. So if I'm applying for a job that's in the book industry, I'm gonna make my resume skill bullets. They're gonna be different than if I was applying for a job in the film industry or to be a teacher or anything like that to work with in IT with computers like there's um, just yeah remember to tailor things you'll also see these um, show up on syllabi under course description and objectives so these are the four objectives that you could put onto your resume and so something like number two would be really good articulation knowledge and experience with and of poetry analysis it's also a really good way to word it because in your resume, you don't really want things like I, like I can articulate poems. You want to speak in this form um, without using the first person. So articulation is much better. And so, yeah, number two is honestly like a great example of something you would put on your resume under skills. If you're applying for anything that has to do with poetry, 
Um, even working at like a bookshop, honestly, that would help or a librarian or something. And this tip works for whatever your major is. So because I'm an English major, obviously a lot of my course descriptions are um, tailored to like English and literature and everything. But if you're like a computer science major, your course objectives are going to be explaining like knows how to program in Python, knows how to do HTML, knows this, that and the other. Um, and so yes, this is definitely tips that can go for any major. Don't disregard this if you're not like a liberal of arts student. Now that I've gone through all of these um, syllabi from this semester, I'm going to go ahead and declutter them since it is the end of the semester and I no longer need them. So that's four more items that I can add to my total today. And I want to declutter a lot of items. So I could count each individual paper, but I I'm not gonna do that. I'm just counting like the packet, the syllabus for one class is one paper. So I have four. to do this yesterday so we're going to do it for two days four and five all right here's number four they all look the same but supposed to all be like different goodness here you go babies here you go babies let's see where's number five they're in for a treat getting another one today maybe i should use number five 